Okay, so we're going to move now into this wardrobe area where we've got several bits of equipment. First off, we've got the freestanding table and uh, just then round the corner, we've got the location for the aerial pole. So this is where we receive uh, our signal for television and also for the radio. So both of the audio uh, equipment is via that system there. So you release the lock nut at the top you raise the aerial pole through the roof just tighten it slightly and then you're able to rotate it and you see what i'm rotating you can see this green picture appearing here now and it's got horizontal on it which is a h uh, which means the aerial is facing in that direction right now and the pitch of the aerial is flat if i rotate that because you can crank this round to a different location and it's changing from a green picture to a red picture there we go, it's now vertical. So what I can't do is retract the aerial because that aerial now is hitting the roof. But you do sometimes on the stereo systems get better reception when the antenna is in a vertical plane. So just be aware that you can uh, probably improve uh, signals by changing that. And then to bring it all the way back round, just turn that. So now we've got the green picture with the H again. And when we finish using the aerial, retract it fully, which you can see now comes right down. And in this particular case, I want the H facing towards the front of the caravan. So the air displacement that comes over the top isn't lifting the aerial up. If it was the other way around, with the H now facing to the rear of the caravan, what's happening here, that's the back of the aerial. It's got a very short overhang, but the main part of the body of the aerial is now facing forward and air displacement's trying to lift it off the body, so it's straining the bracket. So you have it facing, so it's now facing rearwards, or towards the front on that green picture. That's where you get your best airflow for transit. Finally, we've got a booster box on the wall there, uh, which amplifies the signal, so you can see the antennae cable coming in. And then we've got two takeoffs because we've got one uh, point for a television just around the corner on a shelf area where we've got a main socket of 12 volt and an aerial point. I'll point that out to you now. So around the corner here, we've got a 12 volt, which is that socket there. We've got our mains point, which is here. And also then we've got the coaxial point for that reception coming through to the television. Um, moving from that, I did mention about a radio. We haven't actually fitted the radio on this particular classic uh, model at the moment but it, the housing for it is here where we've already got the system pre-wired in. It's just a case of uh, doing the standard connection. So there for the speakers and supply. And this particular one is obviously the coax or the radio reception, shall I say. So the radio is standard. Uh, on this particular model, I believe it to be a Kenwood, but in various other models within the classic range, depending on uh, what location it's been fitted in, you might also find it's a JVC. So either a JVC or a Kenwood system will be fitted on the classic uh, model range going further forward. Um, I mentioned about the table storage. I'm just going to show you very quickly how that goes up into the lounge area. And I'll also introduce it to the chest of drawers with the occasional table. So we've removed the freestanding table now from its housing inside that wardrobe. Uh, this can be used obviously externally if you wish to use it in an awning and the only reason for showing you is that it's got a locked legs so you just release that bracket to allow that leg to come into that location there and the same then appears on the other one it's a locked leg you can't just lift the leg you've got to lower that bracket down for that to extend and then basically you would bring this table then into an area for instance Items for the furniture. Obviously, you'd probably just erect it here. But it's a very sturdy, strong table. And if I remember right, if you do use the occasional table, which is this system here, I'm just going to put a bracket to support that. The more or fine they finish. Not quite at the same level, but I think that's pretty close. So, quite a nice area if you are entertaining more people than just. Uh, the four that you could also have in this vehicle and you'd be entertaining other people from other caravans. So that's the occasional. I'll put this one back down here. Doesn't matter which leg you drop down first, you can do uh, this one or the other one. The only bit I ask you to remember, when you put it in, 
that the last leg that you folded against the body is actually the one that's uh, going towards gravity, going towards the ground. If you've got it going the other way, that leg's trying to open up. So you don't want that. You want it actually so it's facing the other way, supporting that leg and keeping it in place. And I'll just put this back into the wardrobe. So we've now uh, put the freestanding table back. And one of the other features that we have on this particular transverse bed is that we have a concertina door to give you privacy at the back end of the vehicle. And it just clicks in. So that's obviously held back into this little bracket just here. Okay, so that just slots into that area there and gives you a private changing area or separate bedroom should you feel that you need it. And for simple transit, it's a little push button stud, that just popper and stud that just holds that in place there. And that doesn't come out now in transit. I hope you found that video useful. Thank you for watching.